everyone. My name is Kylie McKee, and I'm a PhD student in cognitive psychology here at Northwestern. And I have a question for you. How do we measure something as abstract as thought? Measurement is a really important part of science, and scientists in other fields have a lot of tools to help them make their measurements. Biologists have microscopes, chemists have test tubes and beakers, and astronomers have telescopes. But what tools do psychologists like me have to measure thinking? My research actually focuses on the tools that psychologists use to measure one kind of thinking, spatial thinking. And before I can tell you about the tools we use, I need to first tell you about spatial thinking. And instead of giving you a definition, I'll give you some examples. So if this is your first time in this building today, maybe you used a map and had to navigate to find it. Or maybe you recently bought an Ikea bookshelf and had to take the 2D pictures from the instructions and map them onto the 3D pieces. Or maybe you recently went on a road trip and had to play a real-life game of Tetris trying to fit all your suitcases in the back of your car. These are all examples of times in our daily lives where we use spatial thinking. Spatial thinking broadly refers to when we think about objects and their locations and their shapes and how they all fit together. And spatial thinking isn't just important for our day-to-day -day activities, it's also important for understanding science and math. For example, when you visualize the structure of DNA, you use spatial thinking. And geologists are using spatial thinking when they're working with cross-sections of rock layers. And with the importance that spatial thinking has, not just for our daily lives, but also for students of all ages learning science and math, it's important that we understand spatial thinking. And that's where our tools come in. Traditionally, spatial thinking has been measured with paper and pencil tasks, much like you took in school. You get a bunch of problems, you solve them, and then they get graded as either correct or incorrect. And instead of history problems or math problems, you get spatial problems, like this one. This is an example of a mental rotation problem. The idea is you have to decide if these two objects are the same or if they're mirror images of each other. For this example, if you turn the object on the left and mentally turn it in your head, you can see that these two are different. They're mirror images, just like your two hands are. So this is an example of mental rotation task, which is one of the tools psychologists use to measure spatial thinking. And there's different variations of this task, including variations used with children, like this one. In this one, children have to pick which of the two ghosts fits in the hole. And there's also this variation where children have to pick which of the animals on the right matches the animal on the left. And while these are both mental rotation questions, we can see that there's some differences here. Ghosts versus tigers, two rotated creatures versus three rotated creatures, and asking if something fits in a hole versus if asking if two things match are different questions. And these kinds of differences might seem inconsequential, but they actually do matter and can affect how children do on the tasks. For example, we can give one kid both of these tasks, and they might do really well on one and not so great on the other. So it's important that we understand these tasks. And part of my research is actually looking at how all of these little differences add up. But even if we fully understand these tasks, they still can't give us the full picture. On these tasks, I only know if someone gets the answer right or if they get the answer wrong, and I don't know how they got their answer. Which brings me to the next tool I'm going to tell you about, the block design task. In the block design task, you get a set of colored cubes like these, and you have to use these blocks and put them together to copy designs like this one. And here you can see someone actually doing the block design. And you can see that it's a bit messy. It's not straightforward. It takes a lot of steps to actually get to the final product. And something really interesting about this task is that two people can get both get the design correct, but do so in very different ways. For example, if two people are trying to copy this design, one person might start in the top left-hand corner and go across the top row. But someone else might start by putting the four corner pieces down first. And these are really interesting differences that shed light on how different people 
approach this spatial problem. But in the case of the block design task, the task alone is not a sufficient tool to measure these differences. Typically, the block design task is used with these little wooden blocks and an experimenter writing down whether or not someone copies the design correctly. So to actually capture every action is implausible. And that's where my research comes in. My team has collaborated with engineers from Michigan State University who have created these cubes, we call them smart cubes, that have sensors in the inside so they can detect when they're placed next to other blocks or when they're being rotated or moved. And by having people complete the block design task with a set of these cubes, we can record each action that someone makes during the task. And by having lots of people complete the task with these cubes, we can then have the data to compare different people, to see how different people approach the task, to see how children approach the task and how they differ from adults. And this sheds light on how spatial thinking works in general, and also can set scientists up like me on how to help people improve their spatial thinking in the future. So yes, there are tools that psychologists use to measure thinking. But when we think about these tools, we want to make sure that we understand them and that they can give us the whole picture. Thank you.